Using the shape of animals to create pleasing, aesthetic looking cars is nothing new. Some of the most beautiful cars ever designed are shaped off of some of our friends in the wild. The Mini Cooper and its Bulldog Squat, the Volkswagen Beetle, and my favorite car of all time, the Dodge Viper. But looks, they are so superficial. So I wanted to know, how do designers and engineers mimic animals to build better functioning cars? So today, I'm gonna to speak to the communications director of the Biomimicry Institute. I'm gonna to talk to Sissy Liu of Metal Mark Innovations. I'm gonna to talk to a company that's using Mantis Shrimp to build stronger and lighter carbon fiber chassis. And as a bonus, why not chat with one of my favorite car designers, Mr. Frank Stephenson, the man behind the design of Escort RS Cosworth, the Ferrari F430, the Maserati MC12, the Mini Cooper, the McLaren P1. A big thank you to Eibach for sponsoring today's video. As you travel great distances into the boundless abyss of the unknown, warm pavement transitions into cool gravel. Gravel transitions into rocks, rocks into boulders. Can you handle it? Will your suspension take you higher or will it give up in this very moment, sending you into a U-turn of a life with your truck's complacent suspension? Do you hear those whispers? The whispers of automotive prowess? I Built on a racing legacy from Le Mans to Daytona and now to Baja. Roll over complacency with your Eibach suspension and become Enlightened. What do you think, Job? Honestly, James, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I do know your suspension is the first thing that you should do. And one of the biggest and best out there is Eibach. The legacy they've built within the industry is now expanding to off-road suspension. They have a new line of nitrogen-charged pro truck coilovers that are gonna be perfect for me and Jerry's GXs. They developed this exact suspension with a ton of feedback from the GX community, and their plug-and-play system works with stock components. So that's gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier on install, but it's even better on the road. I, for one, have always been a big fan of Eibach, and it's really cool that we're getting to work with them now, and I'm so excited to put this stuff on my GX. In order to learn more about Eibach's product range and their new off-road suspension, click the link in the description below, or just go to Eibach.com. See you on the trail, Job. Designing a car's aesthetic based on the shape of animals is a pretty common thing. But like we said at the start of this, looks, aren't all that matters. So what if we were to take the lessons learned from billions of years of evolution and mimic it to engineer other aspects of a car outside of its looks? Well, that's where biomimicry comes in. Biomimicry can be used in so many different industries. I mean, let's talk about a morpho butterfly that actually doesn't have pigments or dyes. It uses structural color. There's an easy example in a photovoltaic panel. You know, we're looking at how to translate the way that a plant takes energy from the sun that we can use. This is Lex Omore, and she is the communications director of the Biomimicry Institute. Now, biomimicry, it's the science of how nature approaches the design of organisms. So by studying how nature works, we can take what we learn and apply it to applications that benefit us two-legged animals. And to be honest, this is kind of an obvious thing to do. Animals have had years of evolution to work out all the kinks. This concept of finding inspiration in the strategies that have developed over Earth's 3.85 billion years of research and development. So the species that are alive today hold the blueprints to our design challenges. So if we know that studying nature can give us some insight into building better things, how does that translate into the auto industry? Well, I got to sit down with the CEO of Helicoid Industries, the company responsible for bringing us some super strong carbon fiber, thanks to the Mantis Shrimp. Now the club on the Mantis Shrimp produces the fastest punch in the animal kingdom. It's moving about 50 miles an hour, 50 times faster than your human eye can blink. And it produces forces right at 8,000 G fast enough to rip water apart, causing it to cavitate. So it's pretty easy to see that if the structure of this shrimp's club weren't designed to withstand these forces, it wouldn't survive. And by taking a look at the shrimp's club on a smaller scale, you can see here this helicoid structure. The building blocks of the material in the shrimp's club rotate as it builds up. 
This unique helicoid architecture is stronger and tougher than any other known biostructure in the world. Yeah, so the mantis shrimp is one of the most dynamic organisms on the entire planet because these clubs go through that huge, uh, you know, what should be a catastrophic impact, and yet they do it tens of thousands of times without damage. So by mimicking the structure and not the material, you can take carbon fiber, for example, a material we use all the time, and now layer it in a fashion similar to how the clubs are on the mantis shrimp. So all they would have to do is when they're hand laying it up, use unidirectional material, lay it up in this helicoid architecture, and then go through their exact same manufacturing process. So by rotating the unidirectional sheets of carbon fiber at various degrees, you can achieve certain functional properties. And the benefits, they're pretty amazing. The current best architecture that's used in the aerospace industry today has carbon fiber layered at zero degrees, then 45 left, then 45 right, and then 90 degrees. So if we were to compare it to the same material, the same resin, the same manufacturing process, but just putting it in the helicoid configuration, it can delay catastrophic failure by 74%. It can improve the overall impact strength by more than 50%. It can increase the load bearing about 92%. And so you don't need to know what each one of those means to realize that this stuff is the real deal. So real that Helicord has partnered with Carvajal General Motors to build an all carbon monocoque and subframe car. It's called Carvajal Motors. They're based here in uh, Riverside. Uh, they found us and our technology and then we decided to partner on this chassis to make it stronger, lighter, uh, more impact resistant, and also be able to produce at a cheaper cost because we're using less of the, rock, the really expensive carbon fiber. So here's the prototype that's planned to be built by the end of the year. It's gonna weigh 2,500 pounds, have a 500 mile range, 400 horsepower, and cost right under 60K. And it's modular, so you can change it up however you want. You want it to be sportier, put a sportier top on it, great. You want it for two people, five people, three people, whatever you want, they can kind of do it. And they don't have a name for it yet, so I think we should help them out. My vote goes for the shrimp pit. <laughs> So we can learn from the mantis shrimp to help us build stronger carbon fiber. So how can a butterfly help us clean up our air? Well, the folks over at Metalmark Innovations are using butterflies to not only reduce the amount of bad pollutants coming out of your car's tailpipe, but also improve the air quality inside the cabin of the car. So I sat down and I picked the brain of the CEO of Metalmark Innovations, Sissy Liu, to see how these butterflies help clean up exhaust fumes. Our technology is um, inspired by butterflies like the metal mark and in, in this case the original starting point was structural colors was colors as a result of the structure of the material we actually talked about this in our paint episode of b2b on the wings of these butterflies are some pretty amazing looking iridescent colors that are achieved not by pigments but by the microstructure in the material that make up their wings the physical structure of the butterfly wing interacts with visible light to create color. Lexus used this technology to paint their car that special type of blue, even though there's no blue in the pigment. If you've ever touched a moth or a butterfly and noticed the dust that comes off its wings, well, if we were to take that dust and look at it under a high-powered microscope, its structure is what engineers and scientists are mimicking my co-founders were able to then take that a step further because you know there was discovery in that process. Researchers discovered that when they mimic that structure and coat it with metal nanoparticles, it acts as a catalyst and converts toxic and odor-causing particles into harmless ones. So inside the stainless steel housing of your car's catalytic converter, there are two ceramic blocks. Each block has thousands and thousands of channels for the exhaust gases to pass through. And the inside of these channels are coated with platinum and rhodium in the first block and platinum and palladium in the second block. And these metals, they act as catalysts. They speed up the rate of a chemical reaction without being consumed. So all these harmful gases that are leaving the engine pass through the metal coated pores in the ceramic and cause those gas molecules to break apart and then reform into less toxic gases. But there are some problems with the current system. One being that ceramic block, it's gotta get hot for the reactions to take place. These catalysts, they aren't very efficient at low temperatures. So when you go to start your car until that block reaches around 250 degrees C, they aren't performing to their utmost potential. Meaning under 250 degrees, 
all those bad exhaust fumes are getting dumped into the atmosphere. Now on the other end of the temperature spectrum, they lose their activity at high temperatures. So to combat this, a manufacturer will just spray on more platinum, palladium, and rhodium to compensate for their inefficiencies. And now you have a super expensive cat with more or less a Band-Aid fix. But this is where nature comes in to help us out. Researchers were able to take what they learned from butterflies to develop a new approach for the design and formation of a catalytic material. They basically can synthesize their own butterfly dust. And so you, you'd, uh, in that application, we coat the uh, walls of um, the catalytic converters very much like what they already do. It's just that with our material, it carries this structure that provides much higher function. So they take this synthesized powder containing the metal catalyst and they spray it on the channels of the catalytic converter. And this material not only allows for a more efficient loading of those very pricey catalytic metals, but also the catalyst perform better at lower and higher temperatures, all while needing less of it to do so. And if we think of that on a big scale, that's extremely impressive. The more cars that use this technology, the less pollution they're gonna emit. There's even less pollution dumped out by the machines used to mine these metals because you need less of it. So next time you see a butterfly, give it a little kiss. No. Oh, 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 hey, Jerry. No, oh, thanks, butterfly. Oh, thanks, you have such nice lips. Bye-bye. <laughs> One of the most prolific designers in the car world, Mr. Frank Stephenson, has used biomimicry as a foundation for his design philosophy. His design for the McLaren P1 pulled inspiration from the world's fastest fish, the sailfish, to help in two distinct aspects of the car. One to improve engine performance and the other to mitigate wind noise. I bought a sailfish in Miami. We sent it down to the aero lab in the racing department. They scanned it for us. It was amazing how much influence the scales are the way they are in a sailfish. And nothing really happens when it's going slow. It starts to work at higher speeds. The little bubbles of air started to blend together and to create eventually a film of air. And then there's a separation. There's a boundary layer, as we call it. And basically, you get this fish with no, no water touching it. And the fish is basically just in a pocket of air. And then you get this NASCAR principle of drafting where the front car pulls the back car and the back car pushes the front car and the fish is actually accelerating even faster than it should be. So they took the same design of the scales of the sailfish, they shrunk them down and they molded them into the inside of the ducts that led into the engine of their P1 hypercar. And by doing this, they were able to increase the volume of air going into the engine by 17%. Now, when they were testing the P1, they were getting a lot of wind noise along the A-pillars. The faster they went, the louder it was. The reason was because the mirror arm holding the mirror needed a fairly large arm coming off the body of the car. So the problem started when the wind flow came around the windscreen, then went under and over that arm. So to the sailfish, they went to help solve this problem. Now on the sailfish, where the torso meets the tail fin, there are two bumps on the fish, and they have this elongated teardrop shape. And that shape, amazingly, adheres to the proportions of 1.618, the golden rule of proportions. There's something called the Fibonacci spiral. So it's... Um, so this is a Fibonacci spiral. Basically, it just tightens up, tightens up. But it's on that ratio of 1.618. Not 1.619, not 1.617, 1.618. And basically, that is the correct proportion in nature for a lot of things. I mean, it's any element that I design, I, I consistently try to use that, that ratio. So those two little bumps, those golden ratio rule following fish bumps do something quite cool. When the sailfish is swimming in that pocket of air, thanks to its scales getting up to 70 miles an hour, that air pocket, it has to close off at some point and the water has to rejoin it as smoothly as possible without creating any excessive drag. And those two bumps, they allow that water and air to rejoin in a very efficient way. So Frank put five of those diblet bumps on the mirror arm and the wind noise completely disappeared. They actually use those bumps not just on the P1, but also on the 12C and a lot of other McLarens. I think one of the main lessons we can learn is that if you're in Miami and you see a taxidermied fish for sale,
put it on the company card. I wanna thank all the people that took their time to impart some knowledge on me for this episode. If you wanna learn more about any of their work, I put them in the link in the description. So please go check out their websites, go check out their YouTube pages. They have some amazing stuff uh, that we didn't even really get to talk about fully. So go check them out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Till next week.